We are live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Well Your World channel. This is our Thursday hangout. We have a special guest today. I'm excited to bring her on. But first, since so many of you here might not even know who the heck I am, I figure now's a good time to introduce myself. I am Dylan. This is the Well Your World channel. We eat just like Chef AJ, pretty much the same rules. Very healthy, very simple. Uh, we have, obviously, we started making YouTube videos. We do a live cooking show. I'll throw that on the screen. We've got a live cooking show tomorrow, and we're doing a free trial right now. So you can hit that link down at the bottom, uh, wellyourworld.com slash free trial. There's a link down below as well. We're doing 10-minute meals tomorrow on our live cooking show. We, again, there's a free trial. I won't leave this on the screen, but you can rewind and check it out later. But the biggest perk here in the list is even during the free trial, any of our members get 10% off all of our food products. Check them out. We've got a whole lineup of SOS free products, a couple salad dressings. We make some pasta sauces, a whole bunch of SOS free spice blends. So check that out. We have free USA shipping on everything at $50 or more. So check out our products and everything. We'd love to have you on the cooking show tomorrow. It's going to be a good one. Very popular 10 minute meals. And so with that, I'm going to introduce our special guest, Chef AJ is amazing. I met her a few years ago, but I've been following her for even longer. It took a few years before I had enough clout to actually be in the same room as Chef AJ. But once I met her, we clicked and uh, she's coming on to make desserts, something I am not a pro at. So I'm bringing on the big guns to make the best desserts you've ever had. Here she is, Chef AJ. Hi, AJ. Hi, Dylan. Thank you so much for having me. Now, if this is the Well Your Word World channel, the people that follow you, what are they called? Like wellies, worldies? How do you? Well, your Well Your Worldlings is the name they gave themselves years ago. Oh, so I that's what we go it. with. I love it. Well, you know, I <laughs> wanted to do because you're already the sauce boss, and I, you know, I could do any savory dish, but you could do any savory dish because you have all the magic with all your sauces and spices. So I thought I would do dessert on your channel because I know it's not something you do frequently. And yet that is something I spent a lot of my life doing because I was a pastry chef, the executive vegan pastry chef at a restaurant in Los Angeles for over five years. It was called Sante and it was not a vegan restaurant. And so I love to show people how to make desserts using the fruit, the whole fruit, nothing but the whole fruit. So help me God. And I do have a new book called Unprocessed, which is kind of cool. It's an, if you want, it's available spiral bound or not spiral bound on Amazon. And I'm going to make, thank you. Yay. There's a link down below. I'm going to turn it over to you, but there's a link down below and Sandra's going to put it in the chat box too. get Chef AJ's 10th anniversary book. This book is famous. If you don't have it, get it. I'm out of here. It's going to be AJ now. And I'll, I'll interrupt you with some questions as they come in. Any, but any not too questions on what I'm doing, I'm going to be making mm -hmm. three recipes and I'm not going to be able to make them in sequential order because of the fact that I only have one food processor. And there are certain steps that require the food processor, the S blade to be dry. And since I don't want to have to go run and wash it and take the time to dry it, but I will make sure that I'm very specific as to what I'm doing. But the showstopper recipe today, the pièce de résistance, we're going to be making on page 132 is the mint chocolate mousse tort. And that is, I think you're going to really love. Now, most of these recipes, actually two out of the three are not only SOS free, sugar oil, salt free, vegan, gluten free, but they are very low in fat. As a matter of fact, they don't have any added fat. However, this one for special occasions is going to be higher in fat because it's made from walnuts, which I think if you're going to eat fat, you may as well eat it in its whole food form. And walnuts is probably the healthiest nut you could eat. But we're going to start with the cherry cobbler and we're going to make the streusel component of the cherry cobbler. Now, those of you that may have heard of me, I wrote the book on process 10 or 11 years ago. This is an anniversary edition, a 10th anniversary edition, where we took the recipes from unprocessed. Many of them were high in whole food plant fats, and we found variations for every recipe that we could to make them even lower in fat by switching up things like beans for nuts, for example, or in this case, oats for nuts. Also taking out any residual sodium that was in the recipes because 12 years ago, I didn't realize a little bit of miso, a little bit of tamari while fine for most plants, not if you're going to the True North Health Center. And so we did some things like that. Plus the new book has a photo by Dr. John McDougall. Well, if you're like me, you love cherries. I, I, I would rather eat cherries pretty much than any dessert. I actually had them for dessert for lunch today. And I'm lucky to live in California where I've never had a problem finding frozen cherries all year round, whether it's at Whole Foods, Sprouts, Trader Joe's, or even just at the local regular market, Rayleigh's. And so you can make this all year round because 
Fresh cherries right now are between $7.99 and $11.99 a pound. And they're really almost at the end of the season. The streusel topping I'm gonna to make is one of the layers of the cherry cobbler. It can be used for other things. I like when recipes have components that can be multi-purposed. So while it's going to be used in this cherry cobbler, this streusel topping is very good, for example, just on fresh fruit, if you might be having that for dessert. It would also be good on a banana sorbet or some type of ice cream that you're making non-dairy and vegan, of course. So the only machine that I'm using today is the food processor. And this is, a, I'm in a rental house. This is someone else's. This is a little small for my taste. I believe this is a 12 or 11 cup. I prefer a 14 cup like the Breville that Dylan has. But you want to make sure it's dry because when you're grinding grains or nuts or even herbs for that matter, if you have even a little drop left over in the food processor, you're going to get a pesto. You're not going to get something dry, which is what we need for the schnitzel topping. So we have our S blade because it looks like the letter S. And if you think about like traditional crumb cakes or dessert, schnitzel topping often has flour and butter or oil and brown sugar. So what we're going to use instead of sugar is dates. And I'm just using the Deglet Nord dates because I get the best prices on these at Costco Organic. And they come pitted because when you're using a lot of dates, it's a kind of a pain to have to keep pitting them, although the Medjool probably are tastier and they're more expensive. And generally, they don't come pitted. We're using some rolled oats. I'm using gluten-free rolled oats and a little bit of coconut. Now, coconut is very high in fat, so it's not on a lot of people's plans. However, you can get a coconut that is reduced fat, as crazy as that sounds. So to give you an example, a full fat, and by the way, when I say coconut, I always mean an unsweetened one. A full fat coconut for one quarter cup has 220 calories and 21 grams of fat. But the organic reduced fat coconut for the same serving size of a quarter cup has 90 calories and seven grams of fat. So it's about two thirds less. And again, um, if any of these don't fit your meal plan, you'll feel free not to use that ingredient. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take our oats in the food processor. We're going to take our low-fat coconut with a little bit of cinnamon and nutmeg and vanilla powder. And I'm happy to talk about vanilla powder because it's so good. And maybe Dylan will come up with one someday that's not ridiculously expensive. But even at $38, this bag has lasted me three months now. What vanilla bean powder is are just whole vanilla beans that have been ground. Vanilla extract, it's, it has either sugar or alcohol, and it's really basically a watered down version of the real thing. Most people can't afford to just use a vanilla bean for every recipe, that would be like three to six dollars, but you're not using a lot of vanilla bean powder, usually it's a half a teaspoon to one teaspoon, and it has such a rich, true, authentic vanilla flavor that if you ever do start using it, I, I promise you, you're going to have a hard time going back to extract. I would rather not use any vanilla than use extract anymore because it's You're the one who got me onto that vanilla powder and I definitely will not go back. I love yeah, it. We use it in our banana pancake mix too. Yeah, in the date shape, it's, it's, it's really as this uh, pedestrian, it's, it's subpar. So, you know, the real, you always want the real thing. So in my food processor, I have got the ingredients that I've just told you about and I'm just going to you know, pulse them just for a bit. It's okay if the oats still have some texture. And now I'm going to put in my dates. No matter how many times I squeeze the dates or even cut them with a knife, I always seem to find a pit, which isn't the greatest because it can really dull your blade on the food processor. So what I'm going to do now is pulse it some more. When I make a date nut crust, which we're going to do for the mint chocolate mousse tort, I'm going to keep it running until everything is, is kind of contiguous, if you will. I'm only going to do this because I want to get like little crumbs. I see a question here we're going to give you to a AJ. I don't know if you can hear me with that thing running. But it's about what other <laughs> plant sweeteners might you use. We'll see if you can hear me. Now, I bet you could use well your world date powder in this. Um, you have I have a question food. about that, AJ. Uh, if you use any other sweeteners, natural plant sweeteners like stevia, and what are your, your con yeah, comments on that kind of stuff? I don't think it's natural at all. I think it's a highly chemical uh, product. Now, if you're talking about the green leaf that you see of, of stevia, that's one thing. But if you're buying the powders or a liquid, those are chemicals. And if you are trying to 
uh, satisfy your sweet tooth naturally or lose weight, the worst thing you could do is using zero calorie sweeteners. There's a whole book about this by Dr. Mike, Michael Bourne, pediatric obesity expert at USC. Because what happens is when you use these fake or zero calorie sweeteners, your brain your tongue has taste buds for sweetness. So when you have something with zero calories, like stevia, erythritol, xylitol, phanitol, all those things, your brain gets really excited thinking it's going to get a calorie reward, but it still squirts out insulin and it never gets that calorie reward. It makes you hungrier. They, I think they're more addictive than even sugar. And what all the GI doctors have said, and I've interviewed 50 of them now, is that they're actually way worse for your microbiome. So I don't consider stevia or any of those a natural sugar. There really is no natural sugar other than dates in my opinion and this is from a recovering food addict so now i have my little crumbles i'm just going to put these in a little dish we're going to come back to this later when it's time to plate the cherry cobbler so let me just wipe out my food processor so that i can get to the next part of the next recipe which is the mint chocolate mousse torch so what we're going to do now is the same idea where we're taking dates and nuts together to make something, but this time we're going to run the food processor a little bit longer to make the crust. So I have already measured out. I've got my walnuts raw, of course, unsalted, uh, not roasted, and I've got a little bit of my cocoa powder. And even though I was a cocoa snob back in the day, believe it or not, I have found that this very affordable, less than $5 cocoa powder that you get at the local Winco is as good as any of the expensive French cocoa powders I've worked with, like Scharfenbergers or, oh God, there was one I really liked even better and I cannot think of the name. It's a fancy French name now. This, not the regular Hershey's, the special dark. This is pretty good stuff. So I've got my nuts and my cocoa powder and I'm just going to pulse this again to start. So while AJ is uh, grinding that up, we had a question here. What's the difference between cocoa powder and carob powder? Carob powder has no caffeine. It's not actually chocolate. It has a chocolatey flavor, but it's not actually caffeinated. We love to use carob powder too, but if in small amounts, cocoa powder, cacao is not so bad. Add, oh, by the way, um, you could actually omit this for the crust, except it wouldn't be a, a, a chocolate mousse tart if you didn't put the chocolate in the filling. But Dylan's right, you can use carob powder. Uh, that would I find that the roasted carob powder has a little bit more richness than the raw carob powder, if you're going to do that. So basically, I'm looking for crumbs. So it's like I'm making breadcrumbs, basically. So in my desserts, these raw desserts, basically, we, instead of flour, the nuts are the flour, and the dates are both the sugar and the glue. So now I'm going to do the same thing I did with the sprucel, except this time there's going to be more dates. I'm going to have to run it just a little bit longer because I want a ball to form. And I'm going to be pressing that into my pan, and that is going to be my crust. So if you've ever heard of a Lara bar, which you know is widely available at you know, Trader Joe's, both of these regular stores, it's basically like a date nut snack bar. That's kind of what I'm doing here, is I'm making my own version of the Lara bar with cocoa powder, dates, and walnuts. And again, you, you could do this without the cocoa powder. We had a question here from Camille about what brand of vanilla powder AJ uses. I don't know what brand it is, but usually if it's that vanilla powder, what do you got there, AJ? <laughs> oh, that's the pan. But the vanilla powder is usually, there's a few good brands on Amazon. Uh, they sw I've noticed that they change a, a little bit. So I'm not sure that the brand is the most important thing. Just find that pure vanilla powder. Uh, it's good stuff. It is a little expensive, but you need just the smallest amounts to make it a winner. So if you did talk to me, I couldn't hear you when the food processor was out. So I want to run this until I get what's called, it's like a break point. So let me explain. What I do is I reach my hand in the food processor and I pull out some of the batter to see if I can form a ball, which I can't. By the way, you could eat this. This is like a delicious truffle right now. The way I know it's ready is if I can easily break it in half and it doesn't crumble. If it does crumble, I need to run the food processor a little bit longer or possibly add some dates, but I've, I've been making this for 12 years, so I don't know when it's ready. Now, because this is a mint chocolate mousse tort, I'm going to add a little bit of peppermint extract. Now, when you're adding liquid to this, you wanna wait until it's at the point that you're ready for it, because if you add it too soon, you won't be able to get to that break point. So I'm adding that, and then I'm just gonna very quickly pulse it. Mm -hmm. 
and it is ready. Now, this is a spring form pan. You could probably use any pan, but what's nice about these is the top uh, or the sides, you can lift it up and then take the ring out. And it's just very nice for this kind of desserts if you have one and you can get them pretty much at any place that cake decorating supplies are stole, 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 not stole, sold. I've seen them at Michael's, I've seen them at, uh, at even Walmart. So I'm basically, we just get a little shot. I'm just pressing this in. And we have a crust, you know, when you think about a crust in the traditional world, like it's got butter or oil or shortening or, you know, Crisco or flour. And that basically took less than five minutes to make. And if I had company coming at the last minute, I could slice up some strawberries. I probably wouldn't put the mint in and I could have, a, you know, an instant raw fruit tart without even having to turn on the oven. And since where Dylan lives, it's really hot. And where a lot of people live, it's really hot. These desserts where you can have eating without heating are my favorite. And that's it. So easy to make Beautiful. a crust. So AJ, a couple quick questions now. Are you you're still working? No, no, go ahead. I can, I can slow down anytime. What is the difference between cocoa and cacao? Is there really a difference? Well, there is a difference. And I think it has to do with the processing. So, uh, I, and people that are like into nutrient stuff. I love what you said at the MHA conference, though, about nutrients and stuff. I love that when you said, you know, you don't have time for 21 this, 34 that. So, I've cacao. So, my understanding is the cocoa bean, which when I looked it up, was actually used in currency in Aztec civilization is technically a seed and not a bean. And so when you chop that little cocoa bean off, you get what's called cacao nibs, which we're going to actually use as a topping for this recipe. So the cacao, my understanding is raw. So there's no heat processing. So people that are raw foodists that do eat chocolate will eat it, whereas cocoa powder is processed often with alkali. And so people that worry about nutrient density, whatever, I guess there's more nutrients in the raw, but um, raw cacao powders can be very good. They can be very tasty. And the Vetus makes a good brand, but that's all I really know about it. I always tell people use the best that, that you can afford, the one you like the best. So, you know, let, let's face it. We're not eating this for nutrient density, right? It's a treat, it's a dessert. So I don't think it really matters whether you use cocoa powder, cacao powder, or carob powder. The idea is hopefully not eating this every day. But that said, depending on what your diet is, this might be a step up because I know when I was having Coke Slurpees for breakfast, having this, that was a step up. So, so Joan wants to know if you could, if you've ever tried this with fresh mint or, and Kay wants to know if you've tried it with peppermint oil or extract, if there's a difference there. Yeah, great question. So I don't think fresh mint would work because it's like the stevia leaf. How is it going to get fully incorporated? But essential oil would definitely work. I used one teaspoon of peppermint extract with essential oils. They're so, they're so potent. You'd probably just want to use a drop or two. So yes, that would work. I don't think the fresh would work. However, there are people that don't like mint. You can leave it out and then just make a traditional chocolate mousse tort. That recipe is in the book as well. So now we're going to make the filling. And what's kind of cool about this dessert is, um, it's funny, neither Charles or I eat chocolate, <laughs> but we have company coming next week. And so what's great about this is this is a dessert that's going to go in the freezer and stay in the freezer and it's going to keep its consistency when it's frozen. And it's because of the way I do this two-step process with the filling, which I'm going to show you right now. So the first step is I'm going to take my walnuts and I'm going to process these. It doesn't have to go all the way to a nut butter. You can if you have time, but it's going to work even if you get it just processed enough. But we're not going to put the dates in right away. We're going to do the dates separate, and then we're going to mix them together. All right. She's, she's not going to be grinding that one for long, so I can't interrupt with too long of a question here. I don't know the brand. You're asking a lot of brand names. We could try to fit that question in when AJ can hear us again. I know that AJ's stance on agave is not positive. You want to try to use the whole stuff, like the dates, are a really good sweetener. Agave is much more concentrated. It can get you into a little bit of trouble, makes things a little more addicting. Uh, but I know some people like to use agave and maple syrup. AJ, do you want to comment on that now that you can hear me? Well, again, everybody's at a different point of their health journey when it comes to sweeteners. Most of my work, Dylan, is with people that are really um, identifying as food addicts that are struggling to lose weight. And I don't think that any kind of processed sugar is going to be helpful if that is their goal. That said, sugar has, you know, it has four calories per gram, whether it's agave or maple syrup, it's all the same calorically. You know, we don't have a minimum daily requirement for processed sugar at all. 
And the American Heart Association, the American Cancer Society says that, that we, we have zero need for that, just like we have zero need for saturated fat. And that if we are gonna consume processed sugars, it should be no more than, I believe something like a hundred calories per day. So if it's 16 calories a teaspoon, that's like five teaspoons a day. And can you consume that little? Not if you're drinking a soda, not if you're eating a regular dessert. Uh, I don't see why somebody needs to use agave, maple syrup, honey, any of those when you have the most delicious whole natural food on the planet called dates. When you have a processed sugar, you're stripping it of everything. It's fiber, it's nutrients, it's water, vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, antioxidants. When you have a date, you have a whole food, which have all these things. So you're also going to get satiety because you have the fiber. So anything anybody can do with sugar, I can do with dates, but I don't recommend. I mean, agave is one of the worst because it's it's actually higher in fructose than high fructose corn syrup. So I totally wouldn't recommend that. I mean, maple syrup is delicious, but number one, it's very expensive. Number two, can you really go to nature and find maple syrup. You might be able to find a maple tree. You might be able to tap it, but doesn't it take something like 20 to 40 gallons of sap to distill down to one gallon of maple syrup? So, Good point. you know, my recommendation, if you're following a sugar-free diet, then you would not be having any of those sugars, real, fake, none of these stevias or, or anything that ends in the oil. Uh, and, and you, you ever play with figs? You know, uh, figs are very good too. As figs, uh, especially pair well with chocolate desserts. They, what I like about dates is they tend to be very affordable, especially if you get them online or go to Costco. And uh, figs can be a little bit more more costly if that is an issue for people. But also, dates have tend to have a very neutral flavor. So what what's kind of I mean, they have a caramely flavor, but dates tend to kind of just be sweet. And while anything you do with dates in terms of making like a date paste or a, a date puree, you could do with any dried fruit, but it's going to taste like that fruit. So if we used apricots, it would taste different. So dates to me are like neutral and that's why I tend to use them. So I could go on and on and, and keep going and get this into a nut butter if I wanted, but I find it doesn't make all that much difference. And again, you can buy walnut butter, but it's much cheaper if you do it uh, just using the walnuts. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take the walnuts that I started to turn into a nut butter. I'm going to put it in a separate bowl for now so that I can now make date paste. And date paste is the basis of pretty much all the desserts that I make. I do use date syrup occasionally, and we're going to use it in one of the recipes just to show you, but I prefer to use the whole date or the date paste. So the, di the difference on the date syrup, AJ? Well, date syrup is still going to be caloric. It's not going to be any less calories than any of the other syrups. But what I like about it is if you do happen to read my book on process, you'll see that my litmus test on whether or not I eat a food is can I make it easily in my own kitchen? I can't make honey, maple syrup, or agave, but I can make date syrup. Date syrup is basically made by blending dates in water. Sometimes you can boil it down and reduce it, but I feel like it's just, it's got, it's still got its fiber in it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Or other sweeteners don't. So, the, exactly. I, and I don't use a lot of it. I mean, there's some recipes where yes, there's a lot of it in it, not in this book, but I mean, in the dessert book I'm writing, but for the most part, I like to use the date in its, its form. So the way I make date paste is by taking the dates and soaking them in a liquid. In this recipe, I'm soaking them in non-dairy milk. I have other recipes, like for example, the cherry cobbler, where it's been soaking in the cherry juice from the defrosted cherries. So the date paste will take on the flavor of whatever you're soaking in it. You could use water, by the way. It's not gonna make that much difference using non-dairy milk. There, and there might still be available, I haven't looked, but if you do buy boxed non-dairy milks, Blue Diamond used to make a chocolate non-dairy almond milk with, with no sugar. And that, that would be a good soaking liquid too. If you like, there is going to be some salt in almond milk. I would use soy milk because it's the cleanest, but I'm allergic to soy. So that's why I'm not. So these dates have been soaking for a few hours. And uh, now I'm going to put them in the food process. You don't want to uh, throw the soaking liquid out water or not dairy milk because now all, a lot of the sugar and the sweetness and the dates have gone into that liquid. So you want to keep that liquid. So now we're going to puree this into a puree. All right. We'll ask AJ if there's a substitute for walnuts. Uh, um, substitute. So between the vanilla extract and the powder, yeah, you could probably, it's probably maybe even a little bit less of the vanilla powder, hey, between the two extract versus powder. If you were going to sub it in a recipe. You know, 
so I always thought that you could use less. When I Googled it, Dylan, it said the same. It said equal, equal. But I feel that when a person is starting to use vanilla powder, they should use half and they should taste okay. it. I think half is going to be enough for most recipes. I really do. So making date paste like that, once your dates are soaked, takes seconds. I don't know how long date paste will last in the fridge. I've kept it for months personally, both in the refrigerator and in the freezer. And that's what I use whenever I'm making something like muffins or things like that. And I'm gonna add, and it's funny, it's only like half a cup of cocoa powder in this recipe, but yet it has a rich chocolate flavor of the, the low fat coconut that we talked about and the chocolate. And puree it again. You got to teach me how to use the Breville. I bought it. It's been sitting there. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it works the same way, the Breville. It's just a little bit it's bulkier. So good. It's so ominous. So this already just smells incredible. I mean, I, even though I can't eat chocolate, I can sure appreciate how good it smells and I'm sure how it tastes. So now I'm going to add back in the nuts or the, you know, the ground nuts. Do you, have you tried this with any other nuts? So one person said uh, yeah, Emily is I allergic to find, walnuts. I find um, I find that it's not going to work very well with almonds because I once was teaching a class of all places in Cleveland and the guy had a walnut allergy and almonds totally did not work as far as in the in the filling. It did work in the crust. Pecans could work. But again, you know, I love pecans and I make a similar recipe with a pecan pie, but pecans they have a more distinct flavor. And I'm kind of going for neutral here. So if somebody did not like walnuts or were allergic, hmm, what would I recommend? I mean, you could use, you could probably use seeds, like hemp seeds, honestly. And that would be like super healthy too. So I'm gonna pick uh, No, I didn't answer the question about the low fat coconut. We can see if AJ knows the brand name on that. The low fat coconut. Did you have a brand name on that? I've got. I'm gonna get it for you. I, excuse me for one sec. I forgot the mint extract because it is. It, we're doing the mint. Yes, I did have a brand name. I got this. I got this at Sprouts, but you can also get it online. I have it in my Amazon store, and this is called Let's Do Organic for the reduced fat coconut. And I googled how they did it. It's something I don't know. They press it or dry it or something like that. I, do, I can do a similar version. It's amazing how just by changing the soaking liquid of the date, you could have a different dessert. So I have soaked the dates in pomegranate juice. I've soaked them in cherry juice. I've soaked them in orange juice. And then you get this torch. Charles, can you see how I like to make it a little bit closer? So now what I'm gonna do is look at this luxurious filling. It's gonna go on top of the crust. And I'm going to show you a really cool trick. If you've seen me before, you might know this trick. I learned this, gosh, about 10 years ago from my sister-in-law, Lauren, in Pittsburgh, when I was speaking at Vegetarian Summerfest, and I had to make 300 truffles. And it was just such a pain having to clean the S-blade every time. And she said, you're, you're wasting all the filling. And she showed me this trick. So I've got this dirty, not dirty, but I've got the S-blade with a lot of batter on it. So what you do is you put it back on your food processor. And you just gotta go the right way. And then through the magic of centrifugal force, you put it on just for a second. Okay. And then you pulse it literally for a second and boom. Now that S blade is pretty much clean. I've and, never thought to do that. That's really and then and think about it, even if you're making hummus, people waste so much food by not doing that trick. Cause look at how much batter is left in here. At least a half a cup, which I, which a lot of people would be like, yeah, I'm too lazy. I don't want to do it. So this is a wonderful trick. I think it was worth the price of your admission to today's class just to learn that. All right. So I'm always scraping the top and the bottom with the spatula. Now it takes too long. So I don't have my, I'm not, like I said, I'm in a rental home. I don't have my offset spatula. So I'm just gonna make the top as, as uh, flat as I can using other means. And I'm just gonna spread this out. It smells really good. I mean, listen, this is not a calorie-free dessert, but I will argue that it's still healthier than any dessert made with sugar, flour, and oil because it actually has food value. And when you eat a dessert that's actually made with food, it is not the same. It doesn't cause the same addictive eating as when you're eating something um, with you know sugar and flour at least for me it doesn't and 
spread that out as good as I can. And then now we just want to put something on top. And then this will go in the freezer, well, it's in my case for you know, several days, but at least overnight um, or several hours. And then you'll be able to cut it. It won't get rock hard, which is really cool. So I'm using just, the reason I'm using the full fat coconut from the top is I just think it's so much prettier, the flakes, but you don't have to do this at all. I just, just putting something on the top to kind of make it like pretty-ish. And you can use the other one as well. I didn't, I didn't really use that much. I would say maybe that was two tablespoons. And then these little cacao nibs on top. And then a little nice thing and I'll, I'll take my palm and I'll press them down so that they stick to the batter. And uh, this, was, this was one of the desserts we made in Sante restaurant and it was a very good seller. So just gonna pat it down. And Dylan, I need you to entertain the troops because I do need to wash out the food processor before the next recipe. And I'm going to also stick this in the freezer. So I'll be right back. Sounds great. Uh, I, I have never tried desserts with chestnuts, but I love those little bags of the roasted chestnuts. We have made a few uh, recipes on our uh, live cooking show with the chestnuts. Boy, they are good, but I, they're not very sweet. I mean, they are on the sweet side as far as the savory spectrum, but I don't feel like they're super sweet, but that would be an interesting thing to experiment with for sure. Okay, what else we got here that I can try to answer, even though these are questions for AJ. Um, does AJ try to veganize traditional recipes like that have butter and eggs and oil? Well, eggs, you can try to do that. I don't know if AJ has to, she's already a pro at making them up from scratch. But you can play with flax eggs instead of eggs. What else can you do for butter and oil? I mean, you don't, you can usually just omit uh, a lot of that junk and find a different kind of liquid. But veganizing things is pretty tough. It's a lot easier to sort of find something that's more compliant from scratch. Uh, like AJ's book, just get her a book and then you don't have to veganize anything. It's all already there and healthy, by the way, if you're just joining us, here is Chef AJ's book. Unprocesses the 10 year uh, edition now with all kinds of beautiful photos in here. So there, we'll put a link in the chat box. There's a link down below in the description box of this video as well. If you haven't gotten hold of this book, get it. Every, it's not just desserts, it's all kinds of everything. So get hold of that book, stat. While I was watching this, I kind of heard you say, have you ever had a dessert with chestnuts? And I agree with you, those little bags of roasted chestnuts are fantastic. I make my peanut sauce with those because it's so much lower in fat, you know, than peanuts, but I haven't thought to try a dessert with chestnuts, but uh, I don't see why you couldn't, you know, and I agree with you that it's easier to just sometimes create a, a unique recipe from scratch. I forgot to wash the blade than to try to veganize somebody else's cake with eggs and oil and sugar, because, you know, baking is so much of a science that it's, it, it, you can't just like, well, I'll just take the eggs out or I'll just take the oil out. It doesn't work that way. So. Plus you create this expectation that it's going to be like the original thing. And if you're trying to present to somebody, it, it's usually nothing like the original. And so I like to just start with something completely different that they don't already know what is. And then you don't have any expectation like that dessert AJ just made is totally unique. You're not going to see other people making stuff like that, that are eating standard American, but it's still really good. And they'd never know the difference. So yeah. I would start with those kinds of recipes. I agree. So now let's keep working on the cherry cobbler. Okay. So this is actually, you know, and the thing is, is my, I think all my recipes are easy. I think I have one recipe in the book for lasagna that does take a little bit more time, but I'm really trying to make my recipes so easy that anyone can do them. And most of my recipes were created during the time that I was a volunteer culinary instructor at the Braille Institute. And I tested them on blind people because if a blind person can make it, you know, you would think a sighted person could too. So again, it's the same principle where we're making a date paste, but this time the dates have been soaking in the cherry juice that was from the drained frozen cherries. So you'll need, for, I, you know, people have asked me if you can do this with fresh cherries. It's going to be so expensive. Fresh cherries are so much more expensive and you would have to pit them. So that's my answer to that. So I'm now doing the same thing, I'm making my date paste, this time cherry. <laughs> Ooh, homemade healthy yogurt Sam was asking about in a recipe. I have an awesome cooking show making homemade healthy yogurt. Have you ever played with using yogurt in your uh, dessert recipes, AJ? We are today. It's not oh, homemade. We're going to use yogurt, and I'll explain why in a minute. 
Cool. So we'll get there. Haven't made it. Now, date paste will thicken as it goes in the refrigerator, but I want to be able to plate this for you now. So I'm going to do something that's not in the book, and I'm going to add a little bit of chia seeds to this so it'll thicken quickly. So what I do is with my cherries, what I've done is I've separated, I've taken about maybe like a quarter of the frozen cherries out. Maybe that's even too much. So what I'm doing is I'm going to add some cherries to this date paste. There's a little bit more cherry juice in here. You know what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to save it and then have it with some club soda someday. And then I'm going to have a cherry soda without sugar and that'll be delicious. So I'm just going to do this. I've got to get myself some of those frozen cherries. I assume they're already pitted. That would be a real pain in the butt if they weren't. But man, cooking with frozen cherries would be fun. You can make some good sauces with that too. Oh, I'm going to save this juice because it's delicious. So I'm going to take the rest of my cherries, put them in a bowl. And now I'm going to add some chia seeds to thicken this up. I don't know, probably two tablespoons, four. I want it to get thick, almost like a cherry jam, because I want to be able to plate this while you guys are still watching and not watching. Now it calls for the juice and rind of a lemon. I didn't have one, it's okay. The world won't come to an end. And now I'm going to pour this in here. And I've served this to company and people have gone crazy. We are going to serve this as a chilled dessert, but in culinary school, uh, it was we had dehydrators and you could actually warm this as well. Now, I don't live next door to Trader Joe's anymore. And when I went shopping for this class, I forgot one thing. Trader Joe's sells jarred pears in white grape juice that I was going to use to make the whipped cream. And I got home and I forgot it. So that is where the yogurt comes in. Because yesterday on my show, Chef AJ Live, which airs live every day, 11 a.m. Pacific time, with often a bonus show at 2 p.m. And Dylan is going to be on it next Wednesday. Dr. Stephanie Peacock, a former staff doctor of True North, she made a whipped cream out of this yogurt and we're gonna to try to do the same. Now, this will thicken up even more in the fridge. So I'm just gonna plate one of them right now to show you the process. And then I'll plate the rest of them after the show. So what I like to do is take a pretty glass. It could be a martini glass. I have these milkshake glasses that I'm going to use. I'm just gonna plate one. But I will tell you, we had company a few weeks ago, Cyrus Kambada, his mother lives in my community and he brought the whole family and I was able to get nine using these plastic cups. I was able to get nine nice full servings of cherry cobbler using this exact recipe that we made for them. So we want to bring our streusel topping back and normally I make a whipped cream with pears, oats, and vanilla powder but I didn't have the pears. I didn't want to go to the store. So I'm going to see if this works. And I think it will. I'm going to take this cashew yogurt because I'm allergic to soy. And this is a clean one. It has no sugar. It's made by foragers. And I'm going to do what Dr. Peacock did. I'm going to just take a little bit of my date syrup, squeeze it in on the top. So mix it up. I might have to get a different bowl to do that in, hold on. So I can mix it real good. And that's gonna be my topping this time. And then I'll let you know when we eat this tonight, if I like it better, same or worse. I don't see why it would be bad. So I'm just gonna mix that up. I could put a little vanilla powder in if I wanted, but I think this is going to be good. The only, if, if there is a downside to date syrup, it is because it's color, but think about it. Um, Maple syrup would have the same color too. Let me taste that. Mm. Good. Tasty. All right. So we will top it with this and let's go on to the plating. Certainly thinking on your feet, AJ, with that yogurt hack. All right. So I'm just going to take some of my cherry filling and we'll put it in whatever dish I'm using. And then I'm gonna take my streusel topping, just a generous amount, because this is so good. Perfect. And then I'm gonna take another scoop of my cherry filling, and then some more 
Now, believe it or not, this will serve too, but Charles will eat the whole thing for dessert, I promise you tonight. And look, you can see you can see on the side, maybe not so much if there's a glare, but there's like a little stripe. And then we'll just take a little bit of this yogurt on top. Ooh, it's so good. And that is going in the fridge for his dessert tonight. And I think he's gonna love it. Looks awesome, looks really good. Yeah, and what I used to top this with, and I we don't have a Penzi's in, uh, in the Sacramento area, but if you do or want to order online, Penzi's has something called the power of potato love. And it's these little purple bits that look like sprinkles, but they are made with sweet potato and they look really good on desserts. So that's our cherry cobbler. And I'm going to put that in the fridge. And then afterwards, I'm going to make um, all of these. I'm going to plate these up. Oh, as long as I'm standing by the fridge, I just got to show you. This is what we made yesterday. I got these new recipes for pies because I'm going to teach a dessert master class in the fall for people that really want to get into uh, desserts without sugar and things like that. I do need to rinse the food processor for the last dessert, the caramel blondies, and I'll be right back. That one looked really good. I don't know what that was, but it looked awesome. What else we got to say here? Keep those questions rolling, y'all. And again, if you're just joining us, it's Chef AJ's Unprocessed Book. She's got two recipes done, and we're going to make a third, too. I'm not in any hurry. I'll stay all night if you want to make five more, because the people are loving it. All right. We got my... Okay, so my last one. Now, um, there, like we said, Unprocessed is an anniversary edition, so the recipes... Many of them appeared in the first book, but we've also added many new recipes, including the one I'm going to make now, which is one of my favorites, which are caramel blondies. So we did one with chocolate, so now I'm going to do something without chocolate, with vanilla, and that would be the caramel blondie. So one of the things I like to do also is use bananas because bananas not only are very sweet, especially if you let them get really, really ripe, like here, but they provide a lot of moisture so that you don't need oil in, in your desserts. So what we're gonna do is once again, we're gonna, again, I know there's a theme here. Uh, you could just make like a lot of date paste and don't have to do it for each recipe, but not everybody's doing all recipes. So what we're gonna do is for people that don't, I, I do have a little food scale, not because I'm weighing and measuring my food, but because with desserts, when I was a restaurant pastry chef, everything was done by weight, not by measurement. And that's how I learned to be accurate with baking. So for those that don't want to, you know, Trader Joe's, it's really cool. They sell an eight ounce bag of organic pitted deglet nor dates. And all you got to do is pour your soaking liquid in here and then you don't even have to dirty a dish. So that's kind of cool. I like that. So I'm using that. And this is going to make enough date paste exactly for this recipe, which is perfect. <laughs> We've got a question here about a substitution for oats for those that have an oat intolerance. One thing I love for, uh, is buckwheat flour and Reeves eats a lot of buckwheat flour because of an oat intolerance also. So that's one to try, buckwheat flour. It's also very uh, starchy. So it's a lot like oats. All right. So I've got my date paste for this recipe. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take out like three fourths of a cup and I'm not going to even measure because it doesn't have to be exact because basically this is my frosting. If you are in need of frosting, let me tell you, date paste or date paste with a little bit of vanilla powder is an incredible frosting for anything. I'm just gonna leave a little bit in there and like that, this is gonna go to the side. So what we're gonna use is silicone bakeware, which is fantastic if you're somebody that doesn't use oil. That way you don't need to use parchment paper. I cringe every time I see chefs use parchment paper because to me, it is such a waste. And for the amount of money they're spending, they could just go, you know, online and buy one of these for $6.99. Silicone bakeware is oven safe to over 500 degrees, which you'd never bake over 350 anyway. And uh, nothing sticks to it. So like, for example, I make muffins quite a bit. And pizza, a weeks, my Stranana muffins will be on my YouTube channel. And you just kind of poke them out. And so, and I've had this for like at least five years and it looks beautiful and brand new. I mean, you could use parchment paper, but isn't that kind of like wasteful to keep doing that when you could just get one of these? And it doesn't matter if it's eight inch or nine inch, and really this shape doesn't matter, but I like square because 
find these traditionally are squares. So there's a little bit of date paste left in there, and that will provide sweetness, but we almost don't need it because when you let bananas really get ripe like this, boy, they are sweet. And, you know, um, I have nothing against dates, but for people that were trying to lose weight, I tried to come up with some desserts that were a little bit lower in calorie density because dates, you know, after all, are still about 1300 calories per pound where bananas are about 400. So they are lower. And uh, again, they're providing so much moisture, but there is a secret ingredient here that's gonna make these blondies blonde. And that is sweet potato. And I'm not talking about the orange one. I am talking about the can of yam. So let me show you. Have you tried uh, using thawed bananas? Because a lot of us have frozen bananas that are super ripe to make an ice cream with. Can you thaw them and make this work? Or you think the texture would be messed up? Okay, no, the good question. And, and, and if you want to use frozen bananas, what you're going to do is you want to defrost them first because you're not making ice cream. And just know that when you defrost frozen bananas, you're going to get a lot of liquid in the in the Ziploc or whatever. Now, so you could do one of two things. You could throw that liquid out, but that's where a lot of the sweetness is. Or you may have to just add a little bit more oats. You know what I'm saying? Because you have a little bit greater liquid now. So now I'm going to just puree the banana with the date paste. Is there a trick to keeping those silicone pans clean? Yes, I, I don't know the trick. I do want to ask AJ that one. But those silicone pans, AJ, is there a trick to keeping them clean or do you just let them be a little bit dirty? Well, I, I mean, do you think this that one looks dirty? Spotless. I, mean, I don't think it's dirty, do you? No, it looks it's dirty. dirty. I'm I mean, astonished. I think, you, I think you soak them and you wash them you know, right away. Um, always let whatever you're cooking rest. Like don't try to take it out too soon and then, it, then usually it doesn't stick. So since I'm already batch cooking anyway, because I'm eating these pretty much every day for lunch, I always take the amount that I need for a recipe, whether it's two cups or four cups, and just, you know, keep it in the fridge or freezer. So now I'm going to add this to the food processor. Uh, a question, is silicone toxic? No, it would have to be over like 500 degrees, like AJ was saying, for it to ever get that way. And you're never going to be baking desserts over 350. So you don't have to worry about toxicity from the silicone. Exactly. You're never, you know, you got to worry more about the toxicity of the food you're eating than from the, I mean, Dylan, how many funerals have you been to because of people uh, using silicone bakeware? Yeah, exactly. The same number of people you, funerals you've been to for people that didn't eat nuts. <laughs> okay right. so now we have our rolled oats our cinnamon and our vanilla powder which we're going to add to this now here's the thing i really don't use flour however here's a caveat i'm using a half a cup here you don't have to do it i'm not i'm using it as a textural thing and for somebody that strictly avoids all processed grains just add an equal amount of oats but what i have found is that sometimes oats can be a, not that it's bad but oats can sometimes when you bake them have a little bit of a gummy texture. And if, as a pastry chef, I'm trying to replicate things as they were in the bakery. And I found by taking just a small amount of the oats out, a half a cup and using millet ground, which technically is flour, it helps mitigate that. So we're basically talking two teaspoons of flour per every one serving. But again, you don't have to do that. What I like to do though, is instead of buying millet flour, which is expensive, I buy the whole grain millet because then I can eat the millet as millet. And then I don't have to grind it as fine as you would a flour. So I'm gonna add that. And again, you don't wanna do that. That's fine, just use the oats. Now I'm going to process again. That's a great tip on the millet. I'm definitely gonna be trying that because the, I think it will improve the texture. I like millet. It's a lot cheaper than quinoa too, and it's an excellent starch. I wish Charles wasn't allergic to quinoa and I would learn to do more with it. So now I've got my nice thick batter. And again, if you were using those frozen bananas that were defrosted, this would probably be a little bit more liquidy. So you'd probably have to add a little bit more oats. So we're gonna put this in the pan. And then I'm going to, if you don't mind, because I'm under hot lights right now, I'm going to wait till after the show to bake it. There's not really much to see. It's going to bake for about 30, 40 minutes, and it's going to pretty much look the same, except it's going to be done. And I did send you a picture of what it looks like when it's done. I, I teach for the McDougal program and I do this recipe. They don't allow me to use any coconut at all. So I don't, 
top it with coconut. And again, I'm only doing that just to make it look pretty. I could probably top it with hemp seeds if I wanted like a little white snowflake effect. So we'll put that in there. And I used to, I don't know if anybody has ever remembered, there used to be when I lived in Sherman Oaks, uh, it's not there anymore. Mrs. Beasley's had this bakery. Oh my God, it wasn't vegan, but it was so good. And she'd make blondies. And I, as much as I used to like chocolate, I always liked vanilla better. So go figure. So I do love these. Now, again, remember I told you I don't have my offset spatula. So one of the things you can do is a very sophisticated technique that you really do need to go to culinary school to learn. And it's called the drop and plop. Just uh, moving it around there. I'm doing it like that. The drop and the plop. And look how perfectly it evened it out. And now, we are going to, we could do this two ways. This is totally up to you. I could put this, this is date paste, right? I can put this on right now and it's gonna have one outcome and it's gonna bake in, or I can wait until it's done and cooled and I'll put this in the fridge and then it's gonna be more like an actual frosting. And I think that's probably how Charles likes it better. So I'm gonna reserve this. And I actually probably should put a little bit of vanilla powder in here too, but that's it. Look, it's, I mean, like 45 minutes, three desserts and all healthy, all without refined sugar, oil, salt, mostly flour, except for that one. And they're made from whole foods. So while we shouldn't base our diet just on dessert, I feel that most people are not gonna desert dessert completely. And if I can give you what I think is the healthiest dessert on the planet, I'm going to do that. And thank you so much for this opportunity and for uh, maybe checking out my book or my YouTube show. Like I said, Dylan's gonna be on next week. I have no idea what he's gonna be doing, but it's always a good time with him for sure. I thought I was on on the 20th. Oh, sorry, too. I, I, I'm like, I, I never know what day it is. I just know he's on okay. Wednesday. So it's a week. It is a Wednesday. Sorry. I, I'm, uh, give, I'm, us, give us a couple tips on the your favorite sweet potato, where you find them uh, most frequently if they require. Yeah, so I, I've been very, very, I don't know why I've just been very blessed that I've only lived in California, except for when I went to University of Pennsylvania. And I've never lived anywhere in California that I couldn't find these. Depending on where you live, this could be called the Hannigan, the Jersey sweet potato, the batata, or the white sweet potato. It's sort of, I don't know, light brown, beige on the outside. And if you were to scratch it, it would be white on the inside because there actually are orange sweet potatoes that have this skin color. They are, they are, um, they're not quite as sweet as the Japanese. Let me show you what the Japanese look like. I have some in here. Or these are. These is a form of the Japanese. These are the ones from Trader Joe's, the Murasaki. These are the purple ones that are white. I find these to be a lot sweeter than these. So I will eat these for lunch with broccoli, but these are still plenty sweet. They have a subtle vanilla flavor. And I find that they have a really wonderful texture for making frostings and for using in desserts. And so this would be like a lunch for me with a pound of broccoli. What I do is I don't even bother poking them anymore. I cut the tip off after washing it and I bake it for at least an hour to 90 minutes sometimes if they're big. And when they're roasted, that's the other thing, even when you're using sweet potatoes for dessert, I really recommend you don't steam them, microwave them or boil them because they just, they don't have that sweetness that the roasting brings out the caramelization of the sweet potatoes, especially if you're using them for dessert. So these are my favorite food in the whole world. And you know, I, I just would rather eat this than anything else. The week I met AJ, I, we had, it was at balance, you know, that place in Florida and there had a sweet potato bar with AJ's favorite sweet potatoes. And she had a whole plate of these sweet potatoes. And then that's what got me onto them. They're so good. I mean, and they're so, I mean, you know, when people say like, Oh, I can't eat potatoes. I gain weight. Really? It's like, that's, that's what most people eat to lose weight is potatoes and sweet potatoes. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, AJ, for being here. There are very few people I would ever let on my channel because I'm a channel snob, just kidding. But AJ yeah. is one of those people, you're welcome anytime, especially if you're gonna make three amazing desserts in less than an hour. I love your work, I love your channel, and I and now I'm up there, so uh, being on Well Your World, and uh, I appreciate you taking the time to look at my book, if you have the time, and checking out my show, because it's a lot of fun, except for today yeah. when I was throwing a curveball. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, I hear you're gonna have McDougal on uh, next week, was it? 
Yeah, to rebut. So, so I had a lady on that we thought was vegan and following the vegan diet, and then newsflash, she wasn't. And you know, I wanted to be respectful, and she was elderly. And uh, Dr. Google is going to come on next week and kind of refute what she said. So it'll be fine. Yes, AJ has an amazing show interviewing all kinds of awesome people for the most part, as she discussed. <laughs> And she'll have Dr. John McDougall on next week. So subscribe to her channel if you haven't already. And please pick up a copy of AJ's book. There's a link down below. We'll put it in the chat box. It's all over the place. Thank you so much, AJ, for being here. And I will be cooking tomorrow. We're doing 10-minute meals tomorrow. We're doing a free trial right now for the Well Your World live cooking show. We'll be on for an hour or so. Usually it's an hour and a half or more tomorrow. Talking 10-minute meals. Lots of great ideas. And if you sign up for the free trial, you'll get all these bullet points and especially that 10% member discount on all of our SOS free products. We've got like 27 different SOS free food products that comply with our way of eating, Chef AJ's way of eating, and all of the people who know what they're talking about. So thank you all for being here. We had a fun time. Thanks, AJ, for doing this with me. And we'll see you all tomorrow on the cooking show. Ciao, ciao. Happy eating.